Absolutely. And the fact that she did it with the Netherlands, you know, and the fact that she did it in two back to back tournaments on home soil. She did it in the Netherlands. They were in the Netherlands. They weren't a team that anybody was looking at to win that tournament. And due to the match, it's a combination. You have to have the right players and the, bl and the blend of a good manager. And I think she's shown that managing. I think that experience of her winning with the Netherlands. I know a lot of the players said that she didn't really draw upon that because she wanted to leave it in the past. But the players have been fantastic. And I genuinely believe she's a missing puzzle piece. I think from what I've heard and from speaking to the players, I think it's man management and communication. And I've said, you might not always agree with something the manager says, but you have to respect it. And all you can ask for is a manager to tell you the truth and be honest with you. And I think the difference is in this tournament, everybody knew their roles and responsibilities. That was pretty evident. You know, at times there was times when I thought she'd mix up the team against Northern Ireland. There was times where I thought she'd play Alex Freeman instead of Rachel Daly, but she's the only manager that's ever done it, kept every single team the same the whole way through. And it proved it was right. I mean, last year in the men's tournament, Everybody tried to pick the team. I thought Jack Greedy should be playing. I love him. And then he didn't play in the final. So, you know, we always, we always think we're all the England manager when it comes down to tournaments. But ultimately, that's why they get paid the big money. That's why they're in the positions they're in. And Serena Beekman is a fantastic manager. And I genuinely wish she was there when I was there because I think she's been the major, major catalyst in this. And she's only been there not even a year. Is it I think it's been changing. I think, you know, under Hope Powell, it was very regimented. I think she did a lot for the women's game, but it was almost too controlled. I think under Mark, obviously, we know how that ended in the end, but we had a bit more freedom. And I think each manager that's come in, Phil Neville as well, a bit more freedom. Everybody's getting on board. And I think Serena Wiegmann, you know, I've always said treat us like adults. You know, and sometimes we mentioned St George's Park before, the best facility in the country, one of the best in the world for facilities and pitches, but it's quite isolating. And I think it was so good that the players stayed at the hotel in Richmond, that the Lensbury could be around other people, you know, have a life, play basketball, do all those things because it does matter. You know, think about being in a major tournament. You're away with your teammates sometimes for two months at a time. You see each other more than you see your own family. So it's important that you have your own time, you know, fun time as well, because you have pressure during these tournaments. When we were in Canada, we knew how much people were getting on board. We get videos from Prince William, messages from David Beckham, but you're able to remove yourself because you're in another country. Every time these girls put their TV on or the staff members, it's on the TV. I just did Lorraine this morning. I don't even think that's usually, they don't even talk about women's football usually. And the fact that all these outlets are, every time the girls put on their TV, it was talking about the women's game. So that's also added pressure, but also excitement. And for me, I just felt excited. I felt more nervous because I couldn't control the game. Because when you're playing, I used to get butterflies, but then you can control it. Whereas when you're, when you're on the other end, when I'm doing commentary, you get more that feeling and I had a bit of a sick feeling before the game. But ultimately the girls did it. And these, they're absolutely rock stars. And for people that didn't know some of these, these players before the tournament, they know them now. They certainly do. And talk about some of those rock stars, those substitutions and so on. And, and even Greenwood making that impact when it really matters. Absolutely. And I think that goes down to player management. I genuinely do. I think when you know where you stand, you can see, you know, no player wants to sit on the bench. You want to be part of it. And there's players during this tournament, Hannah Hampton, that have, haven't played a minute. But no one cares. You know, who cares if anyone played a minute? They're still part of it. And I think Serena Wiegmann, you can see at the end of the game, I think when I played there, it was almost like, you had to convince everybody that you were together. We all got along, we all respected each other, but there was this emphasis on we're together, we're a team, X, Y, and Z, whereas I genuinely feel it now, you know, and I think that that's the difference between then and now. I think there's been a lot of development in the women's game, there's more coverage. I don't think the quality has necessarily got better. I think people believe it has because it's on the TV now and it's on the radio, but that's not because I was there, but genuinely, my team in 2007 won a quadruple were brilliant players. Kelly Smith, Anita Asante, Alex Scott, Karen Carney, you know, the list goes on. So, but there just wasn't visibility. There was one game a year on TV and that was the FA Cup final. So thankfully now, you know, there's been investment. You've got to give credit to companies like for investing in the women's game and I think that's where it is now it really is and it's just absolutely fantastic and they need to really you know catapult the women's game even more now and Beth Mead. yeah absolutely I think this whole tournament's been that way as well I've been so thrilled and blessed to be at all the games for England and I've been commentating for TalkSport on all of them as well so I think that yesterday shows you where the women's game is at, where it's going to be. Leah Williamson said, you know, the story's just begun in her pre-game press conference, and I believe that is absolutely true. I think the fact that, you know, this is for all the people that have paved the way, all the staff members that have had uncomfortable conversations in the last 20 years of where the women's game needs to be at, it's for them. But ultimately, it comes down to the Lionesses that were on the pitch yesterday, and they were absolutely brilliant. And I said a lot about this tournament, you know, it'd come down to managing emotions, because you're playing in a home country tournament, you know, it's the first game at Old Trafford in front of nearly 70,000 people. You 
you could barely hear each other. I couldn't hear the person next to me, you know, and it was almost like a rave, but I think they managed it. I think against Austria, the first five, 10 minutes, they looked a bit nervy. Then once it calmed down, once Beth Mead got that opening goal, you could see everybody just relax. And the girls have played their way into this tournament as favorites, and now they've won it. And I just can't quite believe it. You know, we had the after party last night here at Box Park Wembley, and it was absolutely brilliant. And I'm just buzzing for the players and, and congratulations to all of them, and especially Serena Wiegmann, because I think she's been the missing puzzle piece. And I wish she was there when I was there. Yeah. Oh, it's, it means everything. And I think that's why I got so emotional at the final whistle, because obviously I've only retired for two years. We've seen, we've been in meetings about, you know, where the women's game needs to be at. Sue Smith's down there. I was with Anita Asante last night, Kate Chapman, all my former teammates. And I think the fact that we could all be together afterwards and celebrate, you know, the joyous occasion was absolutely fantastic. And it, it is, it's massive. It is massive for the women's game, but it's massive for football in this country. First major trophy win since 1966. A lot of people were skeptical. There was a few minority of people that were skeptical of the women's game now. And people say, well, why does anybody care about that? That small minority, they've got nothing to say now because those people that have those dinosaur mentalities will get left behind. And I just think it's absolutely incredible. I think over 13 million watched it last night on TV, 9 million for the semi-final. You know, here at Box Park, it was absolutely going mental before the game, crazy after the game. Even today on Wembley Way, there's people walking along and they're just so happy. And I'm so happy to be here. Can you talk, what was your emotion at that moment? Well, obviously I had to hold it down because I was live on air. But it was one of those things I actually cried at the final whistle and just a feeling of everything because you're right, you know, Alex Scott, Eni Adereluco, Anita Asante, we were all there. I saw Eni this morning, you know, at one of the shows we just did. And I think it's so fantastic. But we've all been part of this journey, you know, even like small things in the warm up when they're all high fiving and that type of stuff. I used to be in meetings and say to them, you know, in America, this is what we do. And they used to all laugh at me in a good way. It was good banter. And I used to cheer the girls on in warm ups even when I was playing. So there's all that togetherness. You could talk about being together, but it's ultimately you can feel it. And I think. Serena Wiegmann has really brought that to this team. Oh, it's brilliant. And I know Chloe Kelly quite well because she was at Arsenal when I was there. But you could already see, you know, she was a young player. She's still very young. And you could just see, like, she had something about her. She's so good 1v1. And what I love about Chloe Kelly is she's so direct. When she picks up the ball, there's no going backwards. She's always running at players. And she's frightening when she's doing that. And when the ball came to her and she tapped it in the back of the net, I was just so, so happy for her. Because, you know, nine months ago, she could barely walk. I've been there myself in a leg brace. And it just feels like you don't even know if you can walk again, let alone play football. And similarly, Franco, Kirby had fatigue syndrome, hardly played this season and she's played in six games and she's now, you know, she thought about retiring herself, she said it many times in interviews and these are the stories that all these players have. It's not going to be, people can see all the success now but they don't really see the blood, sweat and the tears and the sacrifices that these players make because you miss everything. When you play for your country, it's the biggest honour but you do miss absolutely everything, weddings, christening, funerals, birthdays, you know, you miss really monumental moments and, you know, this is for all those moments and that's why at the final whistle I saw everybody lapping it up you know the confetti was out there they were doing snow angels in the confetti and I'm just so delighted to see how happy the players are because I felt like when I played for England we almost had to play inside of ourselves sometimes and even in the post-game press conference Mary Earps is up on this on the stage Serena you know who's usually really controlled and she's getting involved she was dancing all the players are gate crushing the press conference and that's what it's all about enjoy it because before they know it they'll be back up in with their WSL clubs or you know Georgia Stanway in Germany and they'll be training again so you have have to enjoy these moments because they don't come along very often.